All right, so I promised you guys I would run through uh, some of the flies that I was using on this trip. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna walk through pretty much, I can't remember if it's five or six or seven, whatever, but we'll, you know, you can count them up when you're done. Uh, I stopped doing math when I stopped uh, working, when I started just fishing. Um, so uh, <laughs> I didn't really add these up. Let's start off with uh, basic dry flies. Um, so when I first got here, I was fishing a lot of mayflies, just like a, um, an, like a, uh, a gray, um, like an Adams gray, or a rusty. Size 16, pretty much size 16 was all I used. Um, I can't, there might have been a couple days where I fished a, a 14, there might have been a couple days where I fished 18, but 99% of the time I was reaching for a size 16. I fished these mostly in the very beginning, New Mexico through Colorado. Uh, and then there were some days in, in Idaho. I haven't fished much at all uh, in Wyoming and at the end of um, Idaho, because it kind of got into summer and um, you know end of July and into August, there wasn't as many fish looking for uh, mayflies. But um, in the beginning, lots of mayflies. So that's those. Uh, you definitely want a caddis, um, nothing fancy. I just have a basic, uh, elk hair with some dubbing. Um, yeah, you can see it's not it's not not super complicated. Here's the mayfly. Again, I fished that one a lot, and this rusty one. Um, I retied this one because I used a bunch of them. Um, if I were gonna go with so those are the two, three, or two dry flies that I would have. Mayflies and caddis are gonna cover you for just about everything you're gonna see in early summer, in early like uh, rat, you know, early, late spring, early summer mayflies and caddis and then you're gonna get into some stoneflies so that gets into things like this and something foamy um basically something to do a hopper dropper uh i use my top shelf hopper mostly for everything because um, i tie two different versions and i'll show you those one's a double foam and one's a single foam the double foam i use um say size 10 12 uh what i'm gonna do a lot of you know like uh dropping bead head flies off the back of it um and then for bigger water, uh, when it was really, really serious heavy water, I was using this, and it's kind of a, it's just a big ugly bug. Um, it's been chewed up, it's caught some fish, but I tie it pretty much the same way without the hackle though, uh, for my, my top shelf hopper. But I, you know, it's tied on reversed, wrap the foam over, um, hopefully that's showing up well. You do two different types of dubbing, um, and then I finish it off. You can see it's, uh, it's got a lot of legs, it's a lot of buggy, caught a bunch of fish. But it's really when I'm doing a dedicated hopper dropper in like really heavy, heavy water. So I use that a lot in Colorado um, and then a lot in Idaho. Um, but then I went straight to, this is my top shelf hopper. Uh, this is the one I was fishing all day today. Um, you can see I have two, you know, I told, showed you guys earlier how I tie on one knot and then I put my dropper knot and then seat that together so that it won't slide off. I, I fish this fly um, all day today. So this is my top shelf hopper. This is the Double foam version, um, that's a size 10. I also have a smaller version, a uh, different hook, it's a Timco hook, that's a dry fly hook. Um, and this is a single foam pattern. This is what I use for smaller streams, like cutthroat, brook trout. Uh, it's the same thing as kind of an ant. I want it to land softly on the water. Don't use it to, to float any droppers and that I might do an emerger, um, but I didn't I didn't have fish a lot with that. Mostly these are, the, like I said, I'm trying to keep it simple. The you know five or six, seven patterns you need if you're coming here. Um, the other thing you would want to have, you definitely want an ant, um, something not complicated, just a little bit of hackle. Uh, I have a couple, put some on with red, some on with green so you can see them because sometimes those little streams are really, they're, uh, they're overgrown. So it's hard to see really well. So caddis, mayflies, throw some ants, some, th something foamy to, uh, to float some droppers. So let's get into the droppers. Cause that's what most of my fish were caught on. Um, caught some fish a lot of days, uh, on some of the uh, the top shelf hopper and some of the ant, the ant was great um, and this one like the last couple of days I've been fishing it because it's been smaller water for brook trout and cutthroat so it's been great but if I'm gonna do like if I were gonna recommend certain flies like three nymphs I guess you would take these are the, the three that I would definitely have and I'm gonna start off with my, the most important one that I caught almost all my fish on and here's you can see it, it's just a pertigan and you can see how chewed up that is I have I keep two different versions I used to have a whole bunch and I've just simplified it. I carry I carry just a dark, like a black one, with a I think it's bloody uh bloody red ice dub or something, or 
it's a hair's ear dove. So it's a it's got a little bit of ice dove and a little bit of hair's ear mixed in. It's a great like coppery color um, with a little bit of red. Just looks really good uh, in that copper wire or a, a, a bronze wire or something. Just get kind of a mayfly. I mean, paragons are are they're well known, but they fish fantastic and they drop quick. So you're doing a lot of these waters where it's turbulent and you're doing hitting the pockets and you're trying to get your flies down as quickly as you can. Paragons without a doubt. And then one that's got a yellow for your PMDs. Um, again, I fish this one. I only have, these are the three Pertagons I have left. I had this whole box was full uh, of Pertagons. And I've re restocked and restocked and gone through, but I've, you know, I've caught so many fish and they've threaded them and I've lost them in trees and I've snagged bottom. Um, these are all I have left. The other one you're gonna want, and I fished a lot in the beginning when I first got to, uh, to Colorado, I was going back and forth between Pertagons and Stoneflies. A lot of fish were eating stonefly. So I just do a copper or a uh, yellow stonefly um, with like a copper wire or a black. Um, I keep it super simple. These flies are flies that I can tie on the rub. If I'm sitting in my tailgate, I can tie all these and keep my fly box going. I don't want a whole bunch of complicated patterns. I don't want to have to tie in eight materials. Um, so things like my top shelf hopper, I can tie that without even, I just know what I need. So I can tie it. Same thing with Pertagons. They're simple. A couple materials. Um, and they're done. Same thing with caddis, elk air caddis. You throw some dubbing, maybe you, some wire or some flashaboo or something, and then you put a little elk, elk hair, and you're done. Same thing with mayflies. Uh, super simple, basic flies that catch a ton of fish, and that's what these do. So you have your golden stone, your black stone flies. Ton of fish in Colorado when I first started. Um, all the free stones. Uh, you, I saw, I, I, and I put in a couple of videos where you could just see um, the stone flies flying around. There were, you got here, uh, and there, you just see a bunch of big bugs in the water. And the fish didn't always eat the the, the dry, but they were really quick to eat um, the nymph version. So stoneflies, pertagons, uh, and then some type of caddis. So we'll pull these out. Do a poor job of showing you guys the flies. I don't know if this is going to show up well. So, and then here, like I've said, something simple, almost like a sexy waltz or a... Um, something you know i can't remember what they, i think it's like a saturday special or something it's just a basic it's just dubbing you don't have to do two two different co colors of dubbing if you don't want um sometimes i throw a little bit of green on there but if i was just going to pick one which is what that is it's just a gold bead or a copper bead with a black and a hair's ear and it's just it's all a hair's ear it's a you know like a natural hair's ear for the the body and then it goes up and you do like a little hot spot or something or the uh the thorax and in black um and that's pretty much it that's that's the flies um all i've done i'll run through them again you want mayflies size 16 caddis size 16 you know grays uh rusty maybe a tan that'd be the the three i would go same thing with a tan um or a dark brown maybe with your caddis something foamy uh to float some flies these uh land great and soft in the water they're great for brook trout something big and foamy for your hopper dropper on your bigger water and then something kind of in the middle hopper dropper uh that fish can actually eat catch a bunch of fish caught a bunch of browns on this in colorado caught a bunch of uh cutthroat in idaho with that and then an ant for any of your really small streams that cutthroat and brook trout they're gonna they're gonna just eat ants up as far as nymphs go yeah pertagons just a black one and maybe a, a, a yellow one uh, for your PMDs. You see some Frenchies in here. I fish those. They fish okay too. So you might throw some in if you want. Um, and then stoneflies. Golden stones and black. And then some type of caddis nymph. And that's it, guys. That's everything. I mean, that's pretty much my number one pattern this whole week was, and pretty much this whole like trip was size 10 or a size 12 uh, top shelf hopper. It could be any foam, just something that floats a bug. Um, and then a black Pertagon. Probably caught 75% of my fish on that combination with most of them being on Pertagon. And then, um, fishing 4X to the top fly, 5X in crystal clear water to my droppers, um, like in Idaho. And then like here where the water is a little stained, I just go to 4X, uh, in the beginning, I was doing like a polymer knot and doing the tag, and then but then as you you do this over and over again, like fishing seven weeks straight, I was just like I'm tired of time time polymer knots. I'm tired of time tag. I'm tired of trying to thread that my eye size is getting worse. I'm trying to find the eye of a you know a size twelve hook 
So eventually I just got lazy and I started doing that knot at the end, at the end of my hook bend and then tying another fly off in front of that and then just seating them. Um, and it seems to work out. I'm going to keep doing it because um, I like trying to thread 5X through a size 16 mayfly, uh, dry fly, is it's almost like I need to carry a beer and have a, have a, like, have a timeout because it's so frustrating sometimes. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, drop those below. Like I said, I get to all my questions. I'll answer anything you guys got. I do a terrible job on the water of explaining what I'm doing. That's because I go fishing and I fish hard and I do YouTube kind of like not as serious. Um, I have a lot of fun with it. I enjoy talking to you guys, but sometimes I am terrible about explaining what I'm doing. So, but the good thing is, is I will answer all my questions. If you have a question, which is, I hope is different than anybody else. Like you're basically getting like one-on-one -on -one conversation with me. So I'll, I'll explain anything. I'm not a sh like, none of my flies are a secret. Nothing I'm doing is a secret. Helping you guys catch fish doesn't take away from the fish I'm catching. So with that, um, that's, uh, that's my fly box. That's what I would carry. That's what, if you were coming, building a trip in, um, out West, that's what I would have. Thanks for watching the video. Like I said, drop your questions below. We'll talk later.